Good morning, Jay. We're ready. Good morning. All right, let's do this. So let me uh, go ahead and introduce our keynote speakers for today. Stephen Gordon, founding chairman of the and chief executive officer for Genesis Bank. He has over 35 years of financial industry experience, including serving as founding chairman, chief executive officer and pro president of Opus Bank, founding chairman and CEO of Commercial Capital Bank. He's got so much background in banking, very committed individual. Uh, for somebody to put up his own money for this new venture is, you know, he knows he's committed. So I'm really excited. Um, for him and, and us being able to make some waves uh, in our communities. Next, I wanna go ahead and introduce Tam Nguyen. Tam is the president and co-owner of Advanced Beauty College. For those of you who know Tam, he's a difference maker, uh, game changer like LeBron James of the, uh, of the Lakers. Oh, so he, he, the he, Lakers. You know what he does. We're not gonna talk about last <laughs> night, but you know, he serves in so many boards, leading organizations, uh, I'm just so, Happy and blessed to be working with this guy. Um, you know, he's also a board of director for Genesis Bank. Um, just, just a little bit preface um, of Genesis Bank. Really excited for this collaboration. Um, they're a new bank uh, based out of Newport Beach. Um, the one thing that really sticks out, out of almost 5,000 commercial banks, they're, um, they're, they're an MDI designated bank. And there's only 142 of them. Two of, two of them are in, U, in the U.S. And one of them's in the West Coast. So it, it, it's really awesome. For, for those of you who don't know what an MDI is, it's, it's a minority depository institution. Their main focus is diverse businesses. That, that is where they want to be pushing, um, help being able to make a difference in small businesses. So I'm really, really looking forward to hear what they have to say today. And with that, I want to go ahead and give it off to Tam. Tam, the floor is yours. All right. Well, first of all, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jay, for those that kind introduction. And uh, good morning, ABAOC. Uh, very excited here to, to sit with you on this chat with our founding chairman and CEO of Genesis Bank here at our headquarters at Genesis Bank in Newport Beach. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to start. Yeah, I'd like to start. Can you hear me? OK. OK. All right. So without further ado, uh, thank you again for, for joining this, uh, this wonderful day, and we're happy to kick it off. So as our keynote speaker, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to, uh, to guest host for ABAOC today. But if, uh, yeah, if you want to say hello. Yeah, hello, everybody in ABAOC. And uh, Jay, thank you for, for uh, inviting me to be the keynote speaker. I think our partnership that we have with the ABAOC, our newly announced partnership is very exciting. And um, you know, your team there is incredible and the work that you're doing in the community is uh, quite inspiring. Tam, I wanna thank you for, for a number of things. You know, our, our relationship, you know, we, we often say that, that we're brothers and, um, and I, I, I say that you're my dear friend. Uh, also, thank you for joining the board of Genesis Bank. You are an incredible uh, member of the board and a phenomenal uh, uh, contributor. And, and your passion and energy and commitment to community, again, very much aligns with everything that we're doing here at, uh, uh, at Genesis. And um, it's an honor you know, to call you friend, brother, partner, and, uh, and fellow board member here at Genesis. Stephen, thank you so much for those kind words. It's my honor. And um, I look forward, to, uh, the first question I have for you in our chat is, is as, as Jay introduced, you're fully committed to this. You're all in with a long, illustrious banking career. Um, why did you start Genesis Bank? Well, um, so I've, I've built banks before and I've always been committed to community and, and we can't do what we do without community embracing us and, and pulling us in through that affinity, through that successful uh, understanding of, of our clients' visions and dreams to build a business, to, um, um, to, to execute on their entrepreneurial desire to, to achieve and grow something from, from scratch. Right. Uh, but, but a year ago, a year and a half ago, I was, I was in between banks. You know, my, my former bank that I built, Opus Bank, had been acquired. It was announced that the um, bank was being acquired January of last year. And, and then COVID hit in March. 
and it was very clear that that our community felt it on the chin. You know, I really felt the pain as small businesses that are the actual growth engine of the U.S. economy were, were left behind. And large businesses were prioritized over those smaller businesses, the small to mid-sized businesses that actually comprise our communities. And, um, and, and, and I started hosting Zoom calls with 250 business owners here in Orange County. And, and it was very clear that a, they were struggling to navigate their way through the SBA. Right. B, they were struggling to navigate their way through the complicated bureaucratic banking system. And, and then often they couldn't even navigate their way through their own bank, let alone through the PPP opportunity that the government had rolled out. And um, unfortunately I had relationships with a lot of bank CEOs and through my um, experience was able to help a number of businesses without owning a bank. You know, navigate their way through their bank and hopefully get the CEO of the bank involved to prioritize these small businesses. Unfortunately, it was a time when the banking system really needed to step up and lead. And instead, the banking system kind of ran a little scared and got concerned about their own balance sheet because the entire US economy was closed down and told to go home. So, so I felt very strongly that there needed to be a new bank with new leadership, without legacy issues whatsoever, to step up and lead, you know, in general, the US economy, but here locally, Southern California. And, and within that, the minority community within Southern California was hit even harder. Yes. And then recognizing that between Orange County, LA County, Riverside and San Bernardino County, these are all majority minority counties that range anywhere population, minority population, anywhere between 60 and 75% minority population and within the business community, minority businesses. And, and we really felt strongly that we must be reflective of that community right. and give back to community and impact community. So when Jay mentioned you know, you know, my own capital committed and, yeah. and you were saying all in, Yes. You know, I, I'm half the capital of the company and, um, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm like a lot of our business owners. You know, we put our money at risk. We build a company. We worry about a lot of things late at night. Yeah. You know, we worry about our employees. We create jobs and, um, you know, and, and we hope we're successful. Right. And, and in its early, early stages, you know, Genesis is off to a very good start, but our commitment is, it starts with the foundation of our community. No, thank you for sharing that. Why that resonated. I remember my first conversation with you, how much that resonated with me. As you know, my family, I'm a second generation business owner, family business owner in Little Saigon. And, and my, you know, the, the company that my mom and dad started, my sister Lynn and I, even as co-owners who are educated in the US, who speak English better than we speak Vietnamese, we had trouble navigating. We couldn't get the PPP. We, as the, with the relationships we had in, in banking with large banks for decades since we came here as refugees, couldn't get in. Um, it, was, it was a scary time last year for our family business. After 34 years, we didn't, we didn't know what the future had in store. We just know we couldn't get PPP. And here we were reading in the paper where large corporate chains were getting it. My beloved Lakers, unfortunately. Well, all right, now, you know, now you'll get me going. I mean, you want to talk about the Lakers. You know, Jay mentioned, you know, the Lakers and, and that pulled the, the rug out from under me. You know, I was feeling really good about the start of this and I'm not a Laker fan, you know that, Tim. <laughs> right, but the Lakers got $10 million of PPP funds. They were publicly traded company that got tens of millions of dollars of PPP funds. Right. Yet the small businesses that didn't have the ability to turn to their own CFO or treasurer or in-house accounting team or legal team because they didn't have the sophistication of the larger right. businesses right. to turn around an application overnight and get way to the front of the line of PPP yep. funds ended up at the back of the line. And shame on the banking industry for doing that. I know I wasn't alone. I know my family business wasn't alone. I know the nails industry uh, wasn't alone. And, and, and I know a lot of my brothers and sisters on this conference today from the Asian communities felt the same way. I wanted to go into the, Jay mentioned in the intro, MDI. He, he mentioned about the MDI designation. 
uh, what does MBI mean? Uh, there's some, you know, I'd love for you to dive a little deeper on what is what is the designation of MBI for Genesis Bank mean to the community and, and mean for the bank? Good, and thank you. Good question. Um, and 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 as I lead into it, we live up to it. You know, we 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 bleed MDI in this in this place. So Minority Depository Institution, Jay was mentioning, there are just under 5,000 banks in the US. I remember when there were 15,000 banks in the late 80s. And, and through consolidation, through bank failures, through banks being acquired, you know, banks going out of business, uh, there are now just under 5,000. Of the 5,000, there are only 143 banks that are actually minority depository institutions. Okay. We are one of the 143. Of the 143, there are only two of us that are actually diverse, multiracial minority depository institutions. Those other 141 are focused on one ethnicity group, one minority group within, within the demographic population. Right? We, we recognize that here in Southern California, we're a melting pot. We are a diverse multiracial community you know, that we have. And, and the FDIC defines uh, minority as Asian American, African American, Hispanic American, and Native American Indian. So when you look at the population of Southern California, it is predominantly multiracial, Asian American, African American, Hispanic American, and, and that makes up a very significant percentage of the population. Once we made the emotional and physical commitment, very passionate commitment to, to serving our Southern California targeted markets, and within those markets, recognizing the population demographic diversity, we felt that, that we were very tired of seeing banks saying that they want to bank our communities, that they want to bank entrepreneurs in our communities, that they want to bank what is truly defined as community. And yet the board of directors and the senior executive management team looks nothing like community. And then they say they want to bank entrepreneurs, yet bankers have never done anything on in their entire lives. So here, what we decided to do is make the commitment, the designation to, um, uh, and, and to get the confirmation that we qualified as a minority depository institution. There are two ways to do that. One is to either be majority minority owned, which the bank is not, or then the second test, which is a two pronged test is the board of directors must be majority minority and we are four out of seven members of the board, minority representation between Asian American, Hispanic American, and African American. And, and though the, the regulators do not refer, or the FDIC does not designate women as minority, the OCC does and the Fed does, and we actually have two women on the board as well. Right? Then the second piece of the test is that the target markets that we are focused on must be majority minority and our markets absolutely are. So we qualify, we are designated now as a minority depository institution. And what that means is that we are heavily focused on banking businesses and business owners and family run businesses that are minority um, owned mm -hmm. and minority run. And, um, and, and, and that's who we are. And that's who we are from the very top of the institution at the board of directors level, where you and I both serve and oversee and govern the institution. And then we also have that same type of diversity at our senior executive management level. And then we have developed partnerships, for example, with the ABAOC, where we are very focused on helping businesses grow and expand mentoring, internships, um, these type of fireside chats that you and I will continue doing for our community and, and very committed to banking and helping those businesses expand and grow within our minority communities in Southern California. We just announced uh, this week, also we have a partnership with the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and we're very committed to that partnership and we have other partnerships along those lines that we're gonna be announcing over the course of the next several weeks. But that commitment 
runs very deep in yours and my core. Yes. And, and I think we're making a difference in having an impact already in our infancy, which is only, what are we, two and a half months into it? Right. No, in my decades of working in the Vietnamese and Asian communities, we've never had a chairman and CEO committed to our communities and, and interfacing with small business owners and having that. So thank you for the why, thank you for the MDI designation um, explanation. I'd love to know for you as the founding chairman and CEO of Genesis Bank, and we know the why and we know your, the MDI designation, what is the future vision now for Genesis Bank longer out? So, um, so we were the, when we launched the institution on August 2nd, um, the, the capitalization of the company, you know, we decided we were gonna phase into leg into the capital, which I often recommend to business owners as well, that, that as they capitalize their company and as they're growing the company, you know, that, that they maybe don't do all the capitalization day one that they leg in at perhaps different valuations along the way. And, um, you know, so we decided to do that versus when we launched Opus, we started with 460 million of capital and, and then we, we went and opened up banking locations and we acquired banks and we were in 50 locations up and down the entire West Coast. The vision here is to be missile lock focused on our Southern California market. Okay. It's the second largest demographic market in the entire US to, to deeply penetrate that market as opposed to broadly address an entire coastal region but instead a very pointed, you know, four counties here in Southern California. Um, the institution is already experiencing greater demand than I anticipated at this early stage. So we are going to go through another capital round, capitalization of further capitalization of the company. And, and we're gonna continue with leveraging our technology platform, which in the previous decade, legacy technology that that today we can run circles around we're more of a paperless environment we're much more streamlined we are not going to have branches everywhere because covid really was the death knell in the 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 branch infrastructure i don't know when people last walked into a branch especially over the last year and a half everybody figured out how to really use technology in order to be able to transfer funds pay bills to, to wire funds, to do all their banking online or mobile. So we're going to leverage that. We're still gonna have extremely talented bankers. We may add more bankers and, and really grow the impact that we're capable of having. Right now, you know, we're a small institution that is punching way above our weight class. And, and, and as we grow, we're gonna be able to be leveraging, again, I keep talking about the technology because it enables us to be extremely scalable and, and to operate the way that our clients like to operate. And, and you mentioned you know, your family's business yeah. as a second generation run business and owned business. And, and you're extremely entrepreneurial in everything that you do. We have hundreds of entrepreneurial businesses you know, uh, 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 that are affiliated with the Asian Business Association of Orange County, who all are various ages and, and demographics and generations of business owners, and they all use technology in a different way. <clears throat> I think the banking industry has been slow to adopt and adapt. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we're gonna be a leader in that. And the institution off of this platform I believe can be multi-billions in assets, perhaps with one location, and certainly not with the 800 bankers that I had in the previous company. Here we're 35, we're very streamlined, and we're extraordinarily effective. And the culture, when you're all running your businesses, you often think about as it grows, perhaps the growth impact that could, that could throw off the culture of the organization and I'm extremely nervous and aware about that and wanna make sure that we have a consistent culture within our organization as we grow. And it's hard to do that when you have 50 locations. Right. So we're not doing that again. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, I wanna, as, as, as a guest host, I wanna be um, 
I want to be sensitive to time. Jay, I have a ton of questions more to ask him, but I want to make sure that what our time is. Uh, we are good, sir. Keep going. This is good stuff. Oh. <laughs> okay, so all right, appreciate it. Please let me know. I don't have a clock or watch today, so please let me know. You're good. I'm watching it. I'm and watching the, the questions on the chat, so we're good. But no more slipping in any of that Lakers stuff. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so I'm all I, I LA. Think the Lakers it's all about Lakers the Suns. Aren't you Suns, Stephen? And my brother here is a Suns fan, fan, so we'll see what happens Friday we'll see night. Friday. Lakers host the Suns. We'll see, all right? So, um, I also want to ask you about your partnership with ABAOC and the Asian communities. And, and in, in the short time that our bank's been launched, just two months, I have observed you personally, you and the senior management team go all in and attend and be part of and commit to, uh, we went to a sister organization event at ABA in LA. We went to an Orange County uh, Tastemakers event that was hosted by the largest nonprofit, Asian nonprofit uh, in, in, in Orange County, Ocapica recently. Um, I've, I've seen you commit to ABAOC and, and as well as the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. For me, I haven't seen a bank previously or many corporate American corporations commit fully in the Asian community, especially not just with the, the time and talents of a chairman, CEO, senior management team, but the dollars, the dollars of, 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 of beyond membership, the dollars in terms of a true partnership and investing into an Asian community. Please uh, speak to that and, and, and why, uh, like, for example, the partnership with ABAOC and the Asian communities. So, so it's interesting. The, typically, when these partnerships come together, it, it, it's purely about money, right? And, and, and a bank will be approached by, by an organization that wants to partner with them or have the bank become a member of the organization. And historically, um, bankers have been encouraged to get involved in chambers, to go on boards of philanthropic organizations, but they go on and get involved and commit for less than altruistic reasons. They, they get involved because they, they, they're hoping to meet somebody that enables them to do more business or maybe to get the business of the organization. Right. And, and you know, anybody can write a check. And, and I feel that in order to make a difference, to be really impactful, it takes more than just funds. It takes true commitment and brain power and passion of organizations coming together. And our communities are too large for any one organization. So collaboration, breaking down silos, it's all critically important. And, um, and, and the partnership, you know, what, what, what we talked about with Jay and ABAOC, really, really focused on mentoring small businesses. I mean, anybody who wants to meet with me, I'm extremely accessible. We're very transparent here. We don't believe in the ivory tower and, and I'm not the wizard of Oz hiding behind a curtain. And, and I've grown banks from scratch and forget about a bank being a bank, it's a business. I've grown businesses from, from zero. I've put my own capital at risk. And I worry about in the growth of a company, the exact same things that you may worry about you know, in growing your company. So, so mentorships, internships are critically important to me. Right? If it wasn't for having an, getting an internship opportunity, having a door opened when I was a young kid, you know, when I was 21 and 19 and 18, you know, I have no idea what I'd be doing for a living today. But that gave me my direction. It gave me exposure into business and, and into Wall Street. And I became a young investment banker in New York. Mm -hmm. and, and, and already, Tam, you've introduced you know, potential interns to me. Yep. And, and you know, there are other things that, that the young gentleman you know, wants to do with his life yep. outside of banking. He wants to go into venture capital or private equity and investment banking. But I spent an hour on the phone with him you know, really kind of answering every question. He wanted to know my life business story. Right. And, and, and I really kind of pushed him and challenged him to do things differently, uniquely. And, and he knows he can reach me anytime he wants to reach me as he's considering things in his business career. And, and if he wants to discuss an internship, we can discuss that as well. And, and, you know, so those are the types of things that really get me excited. And then, 
you know, having these type of business discussions with our you know, business community, I think those are critically important as well. And we wanna be involved in workshops and we wanna be involved in helping business grow and helping businesses become more bankable because not every business is set up and structured and run in a manner that it is bankable, right? So, so we intend on partnering with businesses to help them along those lines as well. So, and then, and then beyond that, yes, we will write checks and we have a, a foundation that will give back to community, to philanthropic organizations doing good in our community. And, and yes, thank you all for inviting me in and embracing the organization and embracing the executive team here and our board of directors, because you're stuck with us. And yeah, we've been enjoying, you know, going to events and, and networking events and really getting to know friends and new business colleagues. And, and now we're actually doing business with some of these businesses in the community and we've invited them in and, and, and given our best bankers to those businesses and we'll see where that all goes, but we're all in and, and it's pretty exciting. No, on behalf of that family, I, I know the father had attended our Genesis Bank grand opening and he said his, it was his son's dream to become an investment banker who's a first year college student right now. And in his entire network, he didn't know any investment bankers and, 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 and knowing your background, we connected. So thank you for taking the time and, uh, and, and the attention to, 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 to mentor that. that well, you know, a lot. when I was his age, I didn't know anybody. And I didn't know how to open up those doors. And somebody opened up a door for me, but it was up to me to hang. Right? And you know, it, nobody babied me from that point. Right. You know, it was up to me to right. then prove myself. Right. And, um, you know, and, and he didn't know how to open those doors either, but you know, there are doors that I could open back in New York if he wants to be in New York. And, yeah. you know, and in investment banking in most of the firms that are out there, I know people at pretty high levels. Right. And, and that's sometimes all it takes. The same way for our businesses, our, our Asian owned businesses here in Orange County, sometimes it's a matter of putting someone in front of somebody else and opening a door and, and, and enabling those businesses to go to a next level that maybe they could not have gotten to on their own. Right? And, and, you know, that's exciting that, you know, that this partnership, you know, I think enables more of that. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I, I noticed in the chat, Jay, that there's questions. Um, so I wanted to be sensitive to that and, 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 and take it back over to you. We still have about a couple minutes if, um, if there's any other questions, but there are some questions from the audience um, whenever you guys are ready. Hey, I'll ask my last question then, and then and then take it over to you for the for the chat. Um, you got it. One last question I had before we go to the the general Q and A with Jay is, I am an Asian business owner in Orange County. I'm a small business, and I want to know on a practical level, what does your senior management team or management team and bankers look like? What type of experience do they have? Uh, how do I go about working with Genesis Bank as my next steps as a business owner if I was on the call today and and my friends in the network. Okay, so, <clears throat> so I, I, I get intimately involved. Right? So I'm, I'm chairman and CEO of the company, but I'm not just a figurehead. I'm actively involved with our clients and, and building relationships. Then um, Jenny Simmons is president and chief operating officer. And she comes from a, a union bank and B of A past, you know, and in decades in the banking industry. And she was my chief operating officer back at Opus Bank. So we've all been deeply in the trenches together. And she is intimately involved in managing you know, between the operations and the business development generation of this entire company. She oversees that. And she also is very intimately involved okay. and highly skilled and experienced. Brian Fitzmorris, who is our senior chief credit officer, comes from, you know, again, decades past experience. Uh, he was with me back over at Opus. Prior to that, he was the senior chief credit officer over at City National Bank, which is one of the larger banks in the country, but also, you know, very, uh, and also comes out of a Citibank and um, uh, CalFed background. You know, so has been banking out here on the West Coast and making credit decisions you know, making loan decisions, you know, for decades and is extraordinarily skilled 
highly qualified. And I often say, and, I've, and I say this with great pride as I hear this from many people outside the company, he's probably one of the top chief credit officers in the entire country. Wow. And he's our chief credit officer here. Wow. Um, Will Hahn is our chief financial officer. And he was our deputy CFO back at, at Opus and um, also comes out of a KPMG background you know, as, a, as an audit professional and, and is extremely skilled and, um, and gets involved in, in, for example, in our partnerships with ABAOC and, and developing with ABALA, et cetera. He's intimately involved in helping us navigate and negotiate and put together these partnerships with, uh, with me. Then we have bankers in, who focus on small business, okay. right? so SBA, Yes. and other government programs. And, and the banker that heads up that area joined us from City National Bank. We have uh, our head of commercial banking. You know, so those, those business loans, commercial loans, and deposits and operating accounts and treasury management. Um, uh, he joined us and that's um, uh, Peter Yacoub. He joined us from City National Bank as well, and a very, very skilled banker. The SBA head is um, uh, Andrew Mort, and, and he's spectacular and highly knowledgeable and will take time to educate anybody and help them navigate their way through the agency government type programs. Um, then we also lend on real estate, on apartment buildings and um, office retail industrial type of commercial real estate. So. So those properties that are acquired as an investor owner operator, and historically we've always been one of the largest lenders on the West Coast, you know, and in California on multifamily or uh, properties or apartment buildings. And um, then we also lend on, um, if a business owns their building and wants to refinance their building, or they want to acquire a building that they're gonna occupy, we do that as well. So really across the gamut, then we bank, we have various niches, like we bank professional firms like CPA firms, law firms, okay. wealth management firms, fiduciary firms, so escrow companies, title companies, uh, and, uh, and then we're gonna build out an escrow or acquire an escrow operation to have within the company. So again, very diverse, very skilled, you know, senior executive management team and management team below that. And our chief banking officer is Ryan Badarian. And, and again, a lot of us have been together, you know, for decades or have known each other for decades. So we, we work extraordinarily, extraordinarily oh, well together. No, thank you for sure. That sounds like an all-star dream team. Sounds like more Lakers and Clippers than Suns that. On, on that well, team. I don't know. The, the <laughs> Lakers are 0-1 right now. I don't know if that's a trend, but it's, <laughs> it's only game one. Uh, you know, LeBron made it very clear that he lost his first game one, AD lost his first game one, and it's okay for Russ to lose his first game one. So. That's right. And game two. <laughs> Get a championship. <laughs> but, but Jay, we'll kick it over to you now to uh, handle the Q&A. Thanks for allowing me to guest host for ABAOC. It was such an honor to be able to co-host our founding chairman and CEO of Genesis Bank. Well, that was, that was great info, guys. Um, I, I, I just want to echo what you guys are doing. Um, you know, you talk about the collaborations we have with OCHCC. They're actually... Uh, in the exhibit hall, guys, so definitely come and visit. Um, we are building a strong community in Orange County. Um, so we want to make sure that you are connected with everything from relationships to tools that will help your business. So I'm going to put my president hat on real quick um, because I'm sure our members, I want to I start off our first question real quick. Um, you talk about being an MDI institution. Um, specifically, that's going to be catered to diverse businesses. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to switch my hat now. I'm going to be asking from a business entrepreneur question. Um, tell us what types of programs are you are that's different that you offer that's going to be custom tailored to a diverse business owner like myself, entrepreneur. Um, you know, tell us what kind of programs to expect are we talking about some niche programs that some of the other big um financial institutions don't have that's going to be custom 
tailored to small businesses or, you know, can you just elaborate on some of that? Because I, I, I do see a big, huge difference within the culture of the bank and that's what excited this relationship. But from a business, a business and financial loans in, in, instrument like that, that could help get, take our members' businesses to the next level. Tell us what type of programs um, that you guys offer that could help us, um, especially in this marketplace. Sure. So um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm not going to say that we have all sorts of unique programs that nobody else has, right? Because you know, when, when you're dealing with, for example, a small business and accessing the SBA and other government programs, you know, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty structured in terms of how they work and, and we can get a little creative inside of them. But, but I, I want to I really impress upon everybody that the bankers that we have here were all very carefully hand-selected. And, and I've already made it extraordinarily clear before we even launched the company that it's going to be very, very hard for somebody to get a job here at Genesis, that we're not going to have any weak links, that we're not going to say, you know, to fill a seat with mediocrity just because we need somebody in that seat. It's got to be people who are extraordinarily skilled, who have only successful track records, who understand what I always am, am stress upon everybody, that we must have a, a sense of urgency for our clients. You know, and, and banks often talk about they provide great service. Well, you know, if they don't, that's a, that's a cost of entry. That's where the bar begins. But we actually have a sense of urgency that I think is lacking in our industry that, that, you know, that banks need to really exude, you know, like out of their pores because our clients have that same sense of urgency. The other thing is everybody here is an entrepreneur. Everybody here is a shareholder, an owner of this company. Everybody here made a decision. They could have gone and worked at somewhere larger. They could have been at a, you know, a, 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 a much more, um, uh, I don't want to use the word stable, but a bank that had been around for decades or hundreds of years, you know, they could have gone to somewhere that had a stage coach on their logo, right? But they chose to be here, right? Because we're entrepreneurial, we're building something, we're passionate about community, and we understand our communities. And I think it's important to note that a lot of those larger banks like a, a Wells, a Chase, a City, a B of A, they say they're committed to community, but they don't always show up consistently. They aren't always committed to community. They like writing checks in order to check a box, in order to keep the government at bay, right? in order to keep the activist groups at bay. Right? But we do it for true soulful reasons that you know, I, I've always said, Orange County may be the sixth largest county in the US, but we certainly aren't the sixth largest business community in the US. And we have the ability to be that. The other thing that I think is very unique about us is we love to work with small businesses that want to be bankable, but don't know how to become bankable and don't know how to access the banking system. And we will mentor them and work with those businesses with additional partners brought in in order to bring those businesses into the fold to become more bankable. Right? So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're very committed to doing that. The other thing that is unique about us is that you know, not every business is a small business you know, in the minority community. Some of them are actually large businesses that on the surface would love to bank with us, but are concerned that maybe we can't handle the size of their financing needs. And, and we now have partnerships that enable us to do significantly larger transactions, larger financings, larger banking relationships than traditionally we would be able to do at our size. And an example is, you know, we're right now doing a $100 million transaction. It's actually just north of 100 million on 120 different, I'm sorry, on 25 properties up around the Los Angeles market that technically we should not be able to do at our infancy, but we have partnerships that are enabling us to do that. And we're servicing the entire relationship all the way down to the smaller business that just needs a lot of advice and solutions and committed mentoring. And we're very, very committed to doing that. I love it. I love it. Let's go to the audience. Uh, here's a qu first question. 
comes from Ted Wynn. This question is for Tam and Steven. What's Genesis Bank's strategic advantage over other financial institutions competing for American, America's fastest growing market share of Asian Americans, land, and other communities of color? So I think you touched on that pretty good. <laughs> but but I, I, I would add to that, that we're also extraordinarily nimble. We're extraordinarily flat in terms of our decision making. And, and our ability to, and, and Tam, you've experienced this firsthand. Yeah. Our responsiveness is second to none. I mean, we're, you know, if somebody reaches out to us and wants to do business with us, we've got multiple people here that jump on top of it and, and enable that, that initial discussion meeting to take place immediately. And, and, and if anything, maybe we're, we're so responsive that it surprises the, the client. But, but we, again, that sense of urgency, you know, we're, we're, we're all over that. And yeah. then our decision-making capability, we're extraordinarily nimble. And, um, uh, and I think that that helps a lot. You know? Yeah, I'd like to add and speak to that, Tom. Thanks for the question. You know, as, a, as an Asian American on this board, Genesis, you know, I've referred one of our first meetings uh, when the bank opened was with Asian business leaders in, in, in that group, including Jay and, and Hang and, and others on ABOC, as well as a, a myriad of handful of Asian business leaders from Little Saigon that, that I, I've grown and respected over the years. The, the nimbleness and the responsiveness of not only Steven, but from the president, the senior management team has been incredible. Uh, I myself, as, as a board member, I could share with you, I'm, like you, I've served on many boards. And, and sometimes on that board, you know, in past boards, it's like, okay, I was a, you know, I was the Asian American checklist, right? I, I was a small business owner checklist. I could share with you serving on this board, it's all in. And, and what I mean is the, the responsiveness, the, the partnership in doing, for me, it's all about action, right? I mean, talk is cheap. You can sit on any board meeting, you can discuss things, you can discuss ideas and ideas or thoughts and they go from meeting to meeting. This has been all action. I, I, I often joke that I'm drinking out of a fire hose and I've been going and I've been going at hundred miles an hour and I've been, and, and I keep going. It's the most exciting ride that I've ever had in any chapter. But to be able to work with Steven intimately as well as the senior management team here at Genesis Bank and, and, and feel like I belong and matter, that's, that, that, you know, I've lived here in Orange County most of my life and that hasn't happened before. So go ahead, Jay, back great, to you. Great, great. Hey, we have time for one more question, but on this one, um, I'm going to go ahead and give Tom, Tom Wynn, our past president. Go ahead and ask your question, Tom. Okay, let me, let me try to summarize it. Now, question on growth, uh, Steve and Tam, and thanks for the great um, grand openings, wonderful Newport Beach. Um, the invite. Genesis, as Genesis grows, are acquisitions in fintech possible, especially in the space of B2B, B2C? Is it part of your strategy to grow, especially since fintechs are putting a lot more effort in getting traditional market share in the traditional banking industry? I see that it would be. I could be wrong because you already have such a strong foothold in, in technology and investments. So there would be existing synergy and core competency to have a bundle of these fintechs under the umbrella of Genesis. What are your thoughts? So uh, you're right, <clears throat> um, and I'm gonna hit it really twofold. One, uh, part of our strategy will involve uh, being acquisitive and um, where that goes, you know, we'll see over time. And you know, I've already, you know, inside of our first couple of weeks of existing, you know, investment bankers already called me, already shot over opportunities, you know, to acquire other banks. And, um, and, and, and I looked at them and, and passed, but, you know, I've acquired a lot of banks in my career. Uh, I'm not so sure that our acquisitions will be of banks. They will more likely be non-bank, bank-like entities that, that bring something that we don't have, but our clients need. And, and then on the other side of looking at that question, fintechs have the ability to eat the lunch of the banking system. Um, banks are traditionally slow. Banks are traditionally you know, very much inside of a box. And when I say banks, I mean you know, the senior executive team, boards of directors are very traditional in, in what they do. There are very few that actually get a little creative and extraordinarily forward thinking. And fintech you know, is, is moving very, very quickly. 
and, and through that acceleration is creating solutions that the banks you know, have as voids and flaws that exist inside of the banking system that banks struggle to fix and address because of all their legacy infrastructure and commitments that they already made that like turning the ship would take forever, mm -hmm. right? And so, so it could be that we'll look at FinTech. It may be that we partner with FinTech. You know, fintechs are looking to get inside the banking system and banks are trying to figure out how to get inside the fintech system. And then we have this thing called regulation that sometimes, you know, gets Finra. in the middle. <laughs> and, um, you know, so our ability to navigate that, I think, is, is a lot more advanced than many others because we are so entrepreneurial while also having a tremendous amount of respect for the, you know, for the regu regulated aspect of banking. Um, but there are solutions out there that are very, very interesting, including fintech solutions that exist inside the wealth management um, uh, world that, that maybe belongs inside or affiliated with or partnered with the banking world. Because you know, who needs another, you know, another wealth management group inside of a bank saying we should buy this stock or that bond? You know, I, I think that's, you know, that, that new generations are moving way past that. And I think that applies to a lot of lending platforms that exist and um, other cash management platforms, et cetera. Yeah, Tom, I, I would like to add that I'm, I'm a business owner from Little Saigon. I have a non-banking background on this board, but the wealth of knowledge of banking on this board was 30, 40 years for these individuals. And it also, what, what, what has, has struck me was they're very forward thinking very creative and so fintech and all of these things are on the radar in, in our discussions as, as we learn yeah I, and one more thing tom i would add that you know I, I i pay very very close attention to my two daughters who are 25 and 29 they are right in that next generation who has who grew up with an iphone in their hand right. and the way that they function is very different than previous generations and, and that's not going to go away. If anything, it's going to become even more advanced. And, and they both very much operate inside the digital and social world. And they both, neither one will ever, ever in their lives walk into a bank branch. And, and you know, they do everything on their, through their mobile capability. So, so fintech, you just got to be careful because there are some fintech aspects of the world that, that I think are actually bad for the economy. And then there are fintech pieces of the world that are phenomenal and need to be, you know, kind of bolted in, so to speak, into the banking system. Or else, I mean, if banks don't do this, banks are going to fade away over time and become irrelevant. Great. I'm always fascinated yeah. about scale. And so I'd love to hear your perspective on it. And um, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Great Tom. Time. Hey, guys, it's 10 all 2 I just want to thank our keynote speaker, Stephen Gordon, for all, all the information that you gave us today. I'm sure we're going to be um, connecting again. Tam, always a pleasure. Um, you know, this we're going to go ahead and answer all the questions. Our team will get back to you for all of you, all of you who uh, sent us questions on the chat. So we will get back to you. Um, if everybody could make their way back to the auditorium, it's now time for the B2G panel. Thank you again for everybody. And we're going to be enjoying this. See you again, Genesis. Thank you. <laughs>